Hey everybody, it's your boy Montel. What's going on? How's everybody doing? Good to see y'all here today. I am hitting you now by phone because me and my friends are going to go see the premiere of Ready Player One. Now, I have read the audiobook. I even listen. I'm sorry, I read the book. Sorry, and I listened to the audiobook on the way to Dragon Con last year. And it's one of the most captivating stories I've heard in a long time. The references to the 80s and late not you know early 90s and with music and movies and shows and games and game systems and everything plus the setting was absolutely captivating and you couldn't help but get immersed in the story so i want to go and see how the movie compares but the key thing is you want to catch the essence of the story that's always the main thing that's the main thing i focus on as long as you focus on the essence you can leave out a good chunk of stuff because most books involve a lot of detail so the details can be translated into action. So that takes a good maybe 20-30% of the book itself. But I want this to be a fun ride. And from what I've seen from the trailer, top notch. So I really want to check this out and see what this is all about. So if you guys are ready for this journey, so wait for them to come get me. I'll hitch up along the way. And of course, I already know. <laughs> get ready. Alright guys, I am in transportation with my friends Steven and Stephanie. Say hi guys. Hi. Hello. We are on our way to go see the movie and what's funny is they were talking about reactions. Now, like I said before, we listened to the audiobook on the way down to Dragon Con and we loved it. That was one of the most fun rides on an audiobook going to a con that I've ever heard. So, would y'all agree with that? Yep. That was, that was a blast. I mean, even... <laughs> You know when you go on a trip to a convention and you fall asleep, normally you fall asleep. Oh, no, not this time. No, no. <laughs> Everybody was wide awake for this. Stop and get a soda! You're going to miss nothing! Oh, my gosh! So... You fell asleep twice. I, 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 I did, but I could hear it in my subconscious, so, you know, I didn't miss a thing. <laughs> you know, and I got the book later, so I was like, I know I didn't miss that. It was in my dream. That was creepy, though. That was really creepy. Say, say what you said before. Well, there are a few lines from the, uh, preview trailer. I know, tra I know trailers are like really awkward mm -hmm. and everything. They're supposed to build hype, but there is this line that says where a girl you d we can't tell who she is yet says welcome to the resistance and I'm like oh god please don't make this another Star Wars thing. <laughs> <laughs> the references are real. <laughs> but it's one of those I'm just hoping they keep at least faithful to this to the partial storyline and that they don't that they don't like take key story beats and completely turn or completely like turn them upside on their head. Right. Because I was concerned about that too. If, if nothing else, at least keep the essence of the story. Mm -hmm. We know the book is full of details. Yes. Every little thing, every song, every movie reference, everything. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is Wade is on a mission to find the egg. And everybody is hunting for this damn egg. And of course, I uh, I are trying to get it themselves. And, and, you know, we meet the cast of characters and everything along the way. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, and, and Steven, I know you were. <laughs> you made a quote that you said, I hope they don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> because, as we know, how many times have we seen a book translate to a movie and it is just the biggest steaming pile of what the hell that you've ever <laughs> seen before? And you walk away hoping that maybe someday you'll recover those few hours that you lost. But I'm hoping to give you guys a positive review of this movie. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, but you know you're going to have those pundits. You're going to have those purists that it wasn't this and it wasn't that. It wasn't, nah, 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 nah. So they finally squirrel themselves out of their mom's basement long enough to see the movie. So we'll see how it turns out. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> All right. I will hit you guys in a little bit. Hey everybody, it's your boy Montel. What's going on? I am back. Granted, it's the next day. We got back pretty late and I was not about to sit up and try and shoot a video because some of y'all are quick to grab your phone as soon as you're done. I'm not that guy. When I get home, I like to think over certain things. I like to sit up in my bed with the TV on and fall asleep with my head cocked to the side like I just drank a whole bottle of whiskey. 
but because I don't drink, that kind of kills it. But anyway, just came back about 12 hours ago from watching Ready Player One, and I have to say, I was pleased. Now, I know there are a lot of people who are online quick, who are ready to put their own opinions over it, and they're ready to beat it down, but I had to honestly come into it with an open mind, because I read the book, and I listened to the audiobook, which was narrated by Will Wheaton very well. Done very well, Will. Ah, give you props on that one. And it's been a while since I did a video from my phone, because I'm used to doing it in front of the computer, but you know what? We're going to walk around a little bit, okay? So check it out. Me and my friends, we had a lot of fun at the movie. We went to our local cinema cafe, sat down, I had some food. It was nice to be able to have food instead of snacks or popcorn. Spend all that money, it better be food, damn it. But I was very pleased with the movie. And like I said, I walked into the premiere with an open mind because there were always going to be translations from book to movie with some omissions out of it. And I had to remember that in order to introduce something like this to present generation and current movie go moviegoers right now, there are some things that you can't keep in. And anyone who's read the book and even listened to the audiobook knows that this movie had a lot of detail. We're talking a lot of references to movies, games, books, actors, cartoons, all kinds of stuff, anime, everything belonging to the geek culture. There were a lot of references that were named. So, in order to keep the attention of current moviegoers, which we know can be a bit of a challenge, I can see where the company may have had some problems. So, they worked with Ernest Cline, who wrote the book, and they made some changes. And I have to say, they did really well. First of all, as I have always mentioned before, Thank you for the love from everybody. I appreciate that. Please don't forget to hit me up on social social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification button so that with the bell can go ding and you'll know I'm coming. And like my videos. Please. Please. Please don't laugh at me. I'm only using one hand, okay? I'm only using one hand. So, let's get into it. First and foremost, I have to give it up much props to the production company. The movie was exquisite, visually very pleasing, and I love what they did with everything. The CGI, so clean. It has been a while since I've seen a movie with CGI that was so strong, and it presented itself, and you didn't walk into it expecting to see glitches. It was really well done. Very well done. We're talking a la Avatar. Very well done. And what I liked about it during the course of the movie, when they had their CGI, they mixed it real, well with real world. So it looked like someone just placed CGI inside real world and instead of vice versa. The actors did a fantastic job. Oh, Wade Watts and Artemis, who, by the way, we know us as we know her name, so I'm not going to do anything away. The portrayal of H and Daito and Sho, well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Because I do have some things I did not particularly care for in the movie. But it kept the essence of the book, which was the storytelling, which was the quest for the egg by finding the keys, getting the clues, and moving on. I appreciated that. I loved that part. And I, I even said, they are, are going to eliminate a lot. But as long as they keep the essence of the story, as long as they keep the spirit of it, I'm fine with that. And they did that. They did that. Talking about what the Oasis was and how the, at the, the, the time was and how society was. And also how important the Oasis was. And, and I get that. This even leaks over to you know, present day where people dive into their games just so that they can escape reality. I mean, let's face it, how many of us spent hours on World of Warcraft just so that we didn't have to worry about what's going on outside our doors? And all the other games that were, you know, Modern Warfare, Dota, League of Legends, Overwatch. The list goes on, okay? So a lot of us can definitely relate to that. Um, the villain, I was not happy about the villain, Sorrento, because in the book, Sorrento was a certified evil, ice-cold badass. 
okay? He was a non-stop, did everything and no nonsense. And even at one point, supposedly, in the book, one of the five was supposed to be killed. So, yeah, you can see where I had a problem with that. Um, in the movie, he was definitely wanting to get the job done, but you can see he was still a bit of a squeamish coward. And he still had other people doing his work for him. And, and we've seen enough of those villains before, but it's always more satisfying when you can see a villain who is literally be a certified badass, who didn't look like he had a single weakness, see him taken down. That would have been way more satisfying than seeing this guy, because you could just hit him in the head with a ball bat, movie over. And that's the bottom line of it. And Betrayal of IOI was done very well. I liked how they incorporated everybody. They didn't go into a whole lot of detail with what it was all about. Betrayal of Ogden and Halliday. I liked how they portrayed Halliday. I really did that. I, and, and of course, his avatar in the game Anorak, bravo. I, I really appreciated that. Um, but overall, I enjoyed the ride. I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I kept the book out of my head for the most part and accepted there were certain references that were spot on. But, okay, let's get to the worst side of it. All right. Of the five, there is Parsifal, which is Wade, and you have Artemis, H, Daito, and Sho. Okay, in the book, Sho is named Shoto. Shoto is not 11 years old. He's a 23-year-old man, okay? In the book, Daito gets killed, okay? He's supposed to. And this is some of these portrayals that I feel like could have translated over better. And I know they wanted to keep it a good, a solid ride and it didn't want to go too much because it's always a challenge between PG-13 and R and everything else. The whole thing with the first kiss was not a part of the book. The reference to The Shining was their own inclusion, which I thought was still fun, but they still could have did other things. There were things in the book that could have translated over. They did the, the club where they danced. That was that was accurate until, yeah, until. And then you got this mercenary in there who's falling all over the place. Why, why? Just give Sorrento the ice coldness that he had and give him one badass to follow with him to go and get stuff done. That's all. There were just certain references that were taken out that to me were part of the essence of the book. And, and there were a lot of flip-flops to me. There were a lot of flip-flops. And my friends, Steven and Stephanie, that I went with, oh my gosh, you could, we, we squealed at the right points, but we cringed at the other points. When we saw Mecha Godzilla, really? They had to put their own take on it. Mecha Godzilla in the movie, which was badass. But then you see, oh, you see Daito come out and using the glove and creating a Gundam. A Gundam fighting Mecha Godzilla. Oh my goodness, my geek heart beats so fast. <laughs> but considering they only had two hours to work with what they had, I think they did a phenomenal job. I think they did a pretty badass job with the movie. The movie was good on its own, I'm sure Ernest Klein approved of it, and if the writer has a pretty good feeling of it, then you have to go with that because there are certain translations that are not going to cook over, okay? But I honestly say this, go see Ready Player One. As you can see, I have the scoreboard up here, have everybody from Parsifal all the way down to show. This is integral in the book, and this is integral in the movie, so definitely go check that out. Check it out. Ready Player One is in theaters right now. It is a fun ride. I would recommend going to any movie theater that has a movie buffet because a movie like this, you can't just have popcorn. No, you gotta have food. You gotta have real food. I had fries. I had nacho fries with nacho cheese on them. That's the best movie food in the world. I didn't want to go full because I didn't want to miss a thing and I'm glad I didn't. I ate when I got home. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for checking me out, guys. And don't forget, like, subscribe, notification, social media. Okay? I'm going to hit you with my next video. And I promise everybody who I said it was a new subscriber, I will put you in my next video. But I wanted to get this out. And I haven't done it on my phone in a while. And this is, this is reminiscent of how I was when I first started my channel. So, yeah, for a lot of people, this is a bit nostalgic. So, thank you so much for checking me out, guys. Much love as always. Go check out the movie. Make your own opinion. Form your own opinion and discuss it with other people. And talk about the, the, the tropes and the references because I still am. Okay? And then always, stay nerdy, stay geeky, and as always, stay sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>